we will get started. So my name is Mayor Cunningham. I'm a program manager here at EFC. I'm joined by uh, several of my colleagues who will introduce themselves um, as they speak. And I'm also joined by my colleagues at the Department of Health who will be answering any questions that you have about the drinking water side of this program. But today we're gonna talk about the WIA and IMG grant application round that is currently open. We'll give a little bit of an overview about EFC and then go through all of the details about the WIA program, the IMG program, the requirements that are necessary to apply, and uh, we'll also go through the application so you can get a preview of that. And then, like I said, we'll answer questions throughout the webinar and we'll have some time at the end to address any that come up. So a little bit about EFC, we fund New York State's water infrastructure. We have several programs um, under our umbrella. So we have the Clean Water State Revolving Fund, which provides low cost capital for sewer and wastewater treatment projects throughout the state. We also, in conjunction with our partners at the Department of Health, run the Drinking Water State Revolving Fund, which provides capital for drinking water projects. We have various state grant programs, um, which includes the WIA and IMG program that we're gonna talk about today. There are also a number of other programs that we have, like the Engineering Planning Grant Program and the Green, uh, <coughs> excuse me, the GIGP program, uh, which we have more information about on our website. We also administer the federal bipartisan infrastructure law funding, which is through the state revolving funds. You may also know this as the bill program. So New York State represents a nation leading investment in water infrastructure. We wanted to provide some high level data points for you for anyone who is unfamiliar with these programs and EFC. Since 1990, we have awarded over $35 billion to wastewater projects. On the drinking water side, since 1996, we've awarded about $9 billion. And through our water grants program, we've awarded over $2 billion to 1,000 projects since 2015. So SRF financial assistance, uh, what does that mean? So it provides financial assistance for the loan portion of a project's financing plan. So this allows a convenient one-stop shop for uh, municipalities that are interested in financing their projects. It's available through the Clean Water or Drinking Water State Revolving Funds, and you can pair this with the WIA and IMG program, um, which we're gonna talk about today. Participation in SRF financing is not a requirement to receive a grant through WIA or IMG. We really wanna emphasize that. Um, we tend to get a lot of questions from people thinking that they need to come in for SRF financing. You do not have to, you can apply just as grant only, and we'll get more into that in future slides. Uh, but applicants must be prepared to fund the balance of the project with funding they have determined to be similarly uh, low in cost uh, compared to SRF financing if they do not want to uh, access SRF financing. So we'll get into more details about that, but we will need to see a full plan of finance in order to be eligible for this grant. So just to give you some information about what the state revolving funds are, this visual shows you um, what the SRFs look like. So we have several pots of funding that come in to fund the SRF. We have seed money from the EPA, which is also known as a capitalization grant and that also has a state match component. We also receive repayments from prior projects and we have bond sale proceeds that allow for proactive fund management. So all of these buckets funnel into the SRFs, which allow us to provide low cost funding for wastewater and drinking water infrastructure, and also to provide low interest rates through bond repayments. So the reason it's called a state revolving fund is because these programs are meant to revolve. They are supposed to run in perpetuity. Um, any state that has an SRF is required to ensure that the programs run in perpetuity. And so through our proactive fund management and um, these various programs that we have, we are able to ensure that municipalities can access funding for their water infrastructure projects uh, for many years to come. 
So one other thing we wanted to mention before we get into the main details about the WE and IMG program is our intended use plan. So for anyone who is interested in seeking SRF funding in addition to the WE IMG program, you want to keep this in mind. Um, so the intended use plan is the first step in accessing SRF funding. So if you want SRF financing, you need to be on what is called the annual list in our intended use plan. Um, you do not have to be listed on the current IUP in order to apply for WE and IMG, but if you are seeking SRF financing, you will want to make sure that you submit a listing form by June 14th of this year. So it's the same due date as the WE IMG application, uh, but if you are interested in seeking financing, you will need to be on the annual list in the upcoming IUP in order to receive that financing. To get on the annual list, you will need to have an acceptable engineering report. An engineering report is also a requirement of the WEA and IMG program, which we'll get into. Um, but again, make sure that you submit that listing form by June 14th so that you can access SRF financing. And we'll get into that on future slides. So now we'll get into the grant program. So the reason why we're here, what is the WEA IMG program? This program is for infrastructure projects that protect public health and or improve water quality or address emerging contaminants. It can be paired with our financial assistance through the SRFs, like we talked about, which provide low or zero interest financing. And for this round that is currently open, there's $325 million available. The eligible entities for the WEAN IMG program, uh, there, there are many eligible entities, as you can see in this list. So municipalities are eligible, uh, along with school districts, Indian nations or tribes with a reservation wholly or partly within New York State, public benefit corporations, and public authorities. And now I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Liz Ritchie, to talk about the WEA program. Hi, everyone. I'm a, I'm a program manager that works in our engineering division on um, the wastewater side. So we're going to talk a little bit about eligible projects for both the clean water and drinking water WIA program. Um, for clean water WIA, um, we're focused on projects that are municipally owned uh, sewage treatment works. So that's going to be standard eligible projects if you're familiar with the clean water state revolving fund. Um, the key emphasis is on sewage treatment works. Um, so just note that stormwater projects are only eligible if the proposed scope is addressing a sanitary sewer issue. So um, a specific stormwater project alone uh, is not eligible, but anything related to sewage um, wastewater work is. So uh, that's gonna cover uh, wastewater treatment plant projects, uh, collection systems, pump stations, and anything uh, related there. So on the drinking water side, we're focused on municipally owned uh, public water system projects. So new for this year, we do have an enhanced WIA award. So this is uh, focusing on small rural and disadvantaged communities with populations less than 3,500. And the subset of these projects in order to be eligible for uh, this enhanced WIA must either meet the uh, SRF hardship criteria uh, we have a document online that kind of walks through um, that criteria in more detail. Or um, if you don't meet the hardship criteria, um, without additional grant, the project would result in user rates exceeding 1.5% of the community's MHI. And we're available to you know, help um, answer any questions for that since it is a fairly new, um, a new criteria. And uh, so folks that qualify for the enhanced award um, will receive 50% of net eligible project costs. So um, this walks through an example uh, of um, a typical WIA grant. So uh, municipalities uh, that are not an enhanced WIA grant, the, this has been um, in place for several years that a municipality will be awarded 25% of the net eligible project costs up to 25 million. Um, and if, if you do apply for more than one project, um, or if you uh, receive up to 25 million, your awarded grants uh, exceeding 5 million will be allocated over multiple year in increments not to exceed 5 million uh, and grants administered through EFC 
will not be used to to be will not be used to calculate net eligible project costs. So typically, um, we would back out non EFC grant funding. In the example off to the side, if you have a ten million dollar total eligible project cost and you were lucky enough to receive, for example, four hundred thousand from a non EFC funding source, maybe it being a WQIP grant or CDBG, we would back that out of your total eligible project costs um, to determine your net eligible project costs, um, 9.6 million in this example. And then we calculate your 25% grant, or if you're awarded a 50% grant through enhanced WIA, uh, we would be multiplying by 50% grant to determine your max grant eligible. So, if you had received an EFC grant, uh, for example, GIGP, uh, CWSRF, or bill grant, just note that we don't back that out as non EFC funding, so they can be stacked. On the drinking water side, uh, projects will be awarded 6% of our net eligible project costs um, up to a $5 million cap. And um, just, just note that. Drinking water state revolving fund grants or bill grants um, cannot be stacked, so you are limited to 5 million for um, those thresholds. But projects addressing an emerging contaminant above the state determined maximum contaminant level or MCL may be awarded 70% grant um, of net eligible project costs with no cap. So we provided a similar example off to the side that we would back out. Um, other awarded grant funding to determine the net eligible project cost before multiplying it by the 60% threshold or 70% in the case of the emerging contaminants. So, in order to, uh, this just kind of walks through some of the other project eligibility criteria um, we've already touched on that it has to be municipally owned infrastructure. Uh, but we can fund projects that are for um, construction, replacement, and repair of infrastructure. I'll just kind of highlight that that means new infrastructure, it could be for new infrastructure or um, replacement, repair, upgrades to existing facilities. And, you know, focusing on projects that um, are complying with federal or state environmental and public health laws and regulations. The projects that you're applying for must meet a couple criteria. Uh, the project must result in the construction of the project. Have not started construction before October 1st of 2022. Have not completed construction before the application deadline of June 14th of this year. And uh, if you have advanced to construction or intend to in the next couple months, please keep in mind that you must include EF the applicable EFC terms and conditions. If you have any questions on this criteria, please reach out to EFC or DOH. But I just want to stress that must have included EFC's terms and conditions. So, um, how do we evaluate WIA projects? Um, EFC and DOH staff are going to look at a couple uh, factors. Um, our most important factor is looking at water quality improvement or reduction, uh, reduction in risk to public health. We also look at the financial need of the community, readiness <clears throat> to advance the construction, le level of demonstrated community support, and impact to disadvantaged communities and potential environmental justice areas known as DAC or EJ. Uh, this slide is just going into a little bit more detail of some, some projects that we've funded or types of projects that you could come in for. So again, for the construction, repair, rehab of existing um, or new wastewater treatment plant facilities or sanitary sewers. Um, if you have a project that is doing combined sewer overflow or sanitary sewer overflow projects that reduces discharge of rainwater untreated sewage. Uh, could be for new collection systems to replace on-site septic systems, whether or not that's going to an existing treatment plant or the construction of a new treatment plant. Um, we see quite a few of those. Or for any sludge treatment or disposal facility projects. Uh, for drinking water, uh, again, looking for construction, upgrade, or replacement of drinking water infrastructure. Um, that could be for treatment plants, water tanks, um, pump stations, um, distribution systems, and the projects, uh, anything that is addressing current non-compliance with federal or state drinking water health standards or can protect against future violations, can be for the construction of new infrastructure to replace private wells, 
And um, with, we definitely have focus on um, emerging contaminants uh, such as uh, PFOA, PFOS, and 1,4-dioxane. All right, thanks, Liz. And now I'm going to talk to you about our intermunicipal grant or the IMG component of this open round. So IMG grants are available on both the clean water and drinking water side. Uh, they're for projects that serve multiple municipalities. So how this works, you will need to have one municipality that is considered the lead municipality, and they will apply on behalf of all of the cooperating municipalities. For IMG, you must have a current valid and binding project intermunicipal agreement or IMA between at least two cooperating municipalities related to the financing and implementation of the project. So we want to see how you are going to break down roles and responsibilities, how the financing is going to be split up amongst the municipalities, things of that nature. So we will need an IMA to be submitted. And municipally owned sewage treatment works projects or municipally owned public water system projects that construct, replace, or repair infrastructure or are for the compliance with environmental and public health laws and regulations related to water quality are types of projects that are eligible for the IMG grant. So again, more than one municipality undertaking a capital improvement project jointly um, can apply for IMG. This can be for things like a shared water quality infrastructure project, the consolidation of intermunicipal facilities, or the interconnection of multiple municipal water systems. And again, this is available on both the drinking water and clean water side of our program. So to give you an overview of the type of award that you can receive, municipalities can be awarded 40% of total net project costs up to $30 million for the IMG program. Again, there must be one municipality that is considered the lead and they will apply on behalf of the cooperating municipalities. A municipality may apply for this grant on more than one project, but please note that a muni is limited to receiving one IMG grant per year and each municipality is limited to receiving no more than a $10 million allocation per, per year. So what this means is if you receive that $30 million uh, total, then you would get 10 million one year, 10 million the next year, and then 10 million in year three. And one thing we like to highlight for the IMG program, if you are considering applying for IMG, we would also suggest choosing to apply for WIA. So I'll get into this in the application, but you can choose both programs. The reason we do this is in case you are not eligible for IMG for some reason, you may still be able to receive a WIA grant. Um, we've seen cases where people will only apply for IMG and then they lose out on a grant when it could have been a good um, WIA project. So keep that in mind as you're applying. If you have questions about that as you think about your application or navigating through the system, feel free to reach out to us. And so this is just another example of how we would uh, calculate your eligible grant. So this includes, you know, if you had a $10 million uh, total project and you receive $400,000 in other funding, we would back that $400,000 out. So your net eligible project costs would then be 9.6 million. And with a 40% grant, that would mean that you would be eligible for about $3.8 million in an IMG grant. And project eligibility for IMG, again, it's exactly the same as the WIA program, so it must result in the construction of a project. We want to see shovel-ready projects for the WIA IMG program. You must not have started construction before October 1st, 2022. You must not have completed construction before June 14th of this year when the applications are due. Uh, the one difference for IMG is that we do need that IMA to be included, and uh, it may not be for the construction of water infrastructure that supports new development, whether that's residential or commercial. And again, we're going to emphasize, and you'll hear us say this a lot throughout this presentation, uh, you must include the applicable EFC terms and conditions in contracts that are under construction. As Liz said, if you do not include those terms and conditions, you will not be eligible for this program. So please keep that in mind. So our project evaluation criteria for IMG, again, very similar to the WIA program. So we look at water quality improvement or reduction in risk to public health readiness to advance to construction, the level of demonstrated community support, 
benefits to multiple municipalities because this is an intermunicipal grant program and the impact to disadvantaged communities or potential environmental justice areas. So some examples of IMG projects that we've seen, um, we've seen projects that have come in for the consolidation of two existing treatment plants to a, a single jointly owned facility to treat flows from both municipalities. Um, we've seen projects that are for the interconnection of multiple municipal water systems to provide source redundancy and improve water quality. And we've also seen projects that include more than one municipality undertaking a capital improvement project jointly. And so now I'll go back to Liz, who's going to go through the program requirements. Thanks, Mayor. All right, so um, the WIA and IMG programs do come uh, with what I'll call strings attached. Uh, so we have some programmatic requirements um, that are included in our terms and conditions that I alluded to before. So all awarded projects have to comply with the minimum of environmental review, which is the a uh, state seeker process um, and our uh, state historic preservation office, SHPO, uh, has to comply with smart growth, a minority and women owned business enterprise, MWBE, <clears throat> and equal employment opportunity. Um, off to the side, just kind of show, depending on how you are choosing to fund the balance of your project, there may be other requirements um, involved. So um, for the bulk of the projects that we fund, um, they do like to use SRF financing. So if you intend to use SRF financing along with your WIA grant, you must also comply with a couple other federal requirements such as American Iron and Steel, Davis-Bacon Federal Prevailing Wage, and Architectural and Engineering or AE procurement. Um, and so that's the procurement of, your, of those services that have to follow the federal requirements. Um, we do have guidance on our website uh, for all of these requir requirements, but in particular, we do have a guidance document for AE procurement if you have questions on this, because it is fairly new. And for projects for option two that you do not intend to use SRF financing and you're just going to secure a, a grant, um, you also have to comply with our the state requirement of service disabled veteran owned business enterprise as well, SDVOB. Uh, that's usually a companion um, requirement with MWBE, and we have staff available to help municipalities navigate that program. Uh, I alluded to this on a prior slide, but it all contracts executed by recipients um, that are going to use WIA, IMG, or SRF funds. Uh, they must uh, include <clears throat> our terms and conditions into those contracts. And uh, any contracts that do not include the terms and conditions um, will not be eligible for funding. So that the key here is if, uh, especially with construction contracts, if you're advancing your project forward, uh, make sure that you include the terms and conditions. Uh, this also does apply to your engineering services as well. Uh, so any contracts that are executed, please plan in advance. If you have questions on what the applicable terms and conditions are for your project, you can reach out to Mayor or myself or anyone on the EFC team if you've been working with anybody specifically. So for the MWB and SDVOB program, um, the participation goals do change depending on your types of funding that you're planning to use. So for WIA or IMG grants that are planning to use SRF financial assistance, the participation goal for MWBE is 20%. If you are not uh, going to use SRF, um, the SRF program and you're going to go with grant only, the MWBE participation increases to 30% uh, and the SDVOB participation is 6%. And for those of you that already have bill funding or may become eligible for bill funding, um, those projects um, <clears throat> must also have an SRF fin a financing and be eligible for bill funds on our intended use plan. And those projects would be uh, subject to additional federal, federal programmatic requirements such as Build America, Buy America. Um, we're not going to go into that um, into too much detail, but uh, you can visit our website that goes into more information or you know, discuss with your EFC team if you have questions. All right, thanks, Liz. And now I will go into the actual grant application. So um, it's one application for both WIA and IMG, so you don't need to fill out two separate applications. 
Um, it is a new online application portal. Um, it's similar to what we used last year. So anyone who had applied last year and is applying again, your same login will be applicable um, and you will see your previous applications. We've made some updates uh, to the application, which I'll show you in a few minutes. Um, you would identify if you're applying for clean water or drinking water, and you can save your progress of the draft application as you move through. So this, these are the sections that are within the application. I'm actually going to open up an application for you and we will walk through it um, so you can get an idea of what this looks like. All right, so right now I'm sharing my screen. First, for anyone who's not familiar with the program and you're wondering how do I access the application, you would go to the EFC website and you will see that we have this banner right here on the main page to make it easy for you. Um, you'll choose apply now. And if you scroll down, you'll choose apply now again. Uh, also on this page, I wanna highlight before we leave, um, there are some um, helpful guides that we've put together. So the grant summary, we highly encourage everyone to read the grant summary before you apply. So it includes a lot of the information that we have um, talked about today on this webinar, but it also goes through required documents, uh, things that you might need, some, some tips that will help you with the application process. So we really encourage you to come to this page and read the grant summary. Uh, you also uh, have the opportunity to request a community assistance team's um, consultation. So we can provide guidance on the program. And if you have questions about the application or just how to even get started, we can help you there. But if you want to apply, you'll click on apply now and you would click on this online application um, link here, which will take you to our application portal. So when you first log into the application portal, you have this main screen here. Uh, this is also the portal for the SRF application. So for anyone who's interested in applying for WIA and SRF, you can do that here in the same portal so that it's easier for you all. If you have previous applications that you've worked on, or if you started an application, you'll see that down here in this little window, it'll tell you the number of unsubmitted applications that you have. So anything that you've started and the number of submitted applications, if you are planning on submitting multiple. But to start filling out an application, you're gonna click on applications and your screen you know, will most likely be blank if this is the first time you're coming to this program. If you applied last year, you'll see your previous application here. Uh, but if you wanna start a new application, you would click new application and you'll get this screen that's gonna ask you a few primary questions before you get started. So you'll have to select a municipality and I'm just gonna go with the town of Adams. If there's anybody from the town online, don't worry, I'll delete this out so this won't be applicable to you. Um, you'll then select your application type. So um, if you're applying for WIA and IMG as your starting point, you would choose WIA IMG, which is what I'll do now. And you can also, like I said, access the SRAP application. And then you would choose if you're submitting for clean water or drinking water, just gonna do clean water. And then if you're applying as grant only or grant with SRF financing. So I'm gonna choose grant with SRF financing. So then you would hit continue. And this pop-up is going to come up. Um, this is a helpful feature that we have available for you. It asks if you wanna copy answers from another application. So this is helpful for a few reasons. If you have a previous application from last year, you can copy over answers uh, from that application to your new application for this round. Um, and you, know, you can go through, make updates, and uh, make sure that you're including new documents if you need to, but this is just helpful so it's less um, data entry that you'll have to do manually. This is also helpful if you are applying for WIA and SRF. So if you start a WIA application first, go through the application, um, and then you will need to submit an SRF, SRF application as well, because that is required if you're seeking grant and SRF financing. This will allow you to copy answers from your WIA application, like budget information, any grant awards that you might have. Uh, there's similar documentation between the WIA application and the SRF application. All of those things can get copied over so that it's less you will have to do um, and less duplicative for you. 
So I'm just going to pretend like I don't have any other applications in here and I'm going to select no that I don't want to copy. So this is the first page that you're going to be taken to when you answer those questions. So we'll need some information about the applicant. So some of this will be filled in from the questions that you answered on that first pop up. So it has the municipality name and the type of finance or the type of grant um, application that I'm trying to fill out. So if I'm applying for grant and SRF here or, or grant only. You also have the ability to change this. So if you decide as you're going through that, you know, you no longer want to apply as grant and SRF, you can switch this to grant only or vice versa. If you start a grant only application and decide before you submit, you want grant and SRF, you can do that as well. Um, we ask for information about uh, if you already have an existing SRF project, we want to know the project number, uh, the project county, your unique entity identifier, and then some contact information about your highest elected official authorized rep and some additional individuals. So this helps us if we have any questions about your project or the application. You that would then down here choose the grant program for which you're applying to. So you can choose one of them, WIA or IMG, or you can choose both. Um, this is helpful if you are considering applying for IMG. We would suggest that you check both boxes um, so that you can be considered for both programs in the event that you are ineligible for some reason for the IMG program. And when you're done filling this information out, you would hit save up at the top and it will save your information. So for now, since I'm not entering anything, I'm just going to hit cancel. You then go to the general information tab. And so this will ask you for information about your project. So on this tab, you will need to give us your project name, project location, latitude, and longitude. We ask for the legislative districts that are applicable for the project. Uh, the district name and service area, project population, and some other information that is applicable. Uh, we also ask for the design start dates and your construction start and end dates. You'll notice as you go through here that there is logic built in. So, you know, um, we had talked about the start construction start date and construction end date criteria, um, October 1st, 2022 and June 14th, 2024. So if you enter dates that are prior to that point or after that point, um, if we're talking about the construction end date, then um, you will get some pop-ups that just let you know that you can't move forward um, because those are a part of our criteria. So you'll notice that along the way. And I'll point out some other features that can help you identify those items as well. Once you're done the general information section, we'll move on to the project information section. So this is where we really get into the details about the project that you are applying for. So we'll want a brief description of the project, um, depending on if this is a clean water, you know, I'm in the clean water application, so it's asking me about a speedies permit and some information related to that. We also have questions about whether or not the project is going to benefit an EJ or DAC community. Uh, I know we talked about that in the webinar slides, but this is a, a helpful thing that I wanted to point out. If you're wondering if your municipality is designated as a potential EJ area or a DAC, we have links to the tools that we use to confirm that information so that you can see that as you're filling out the application. So we use the DEC info locator. We have links to their website. Uh, what you can do is enter in the address for the project or the municipality, and it will show you in different layers uh, whether or not the project falls in or near an EJ or DAC area. Again, if you have questions as you're going through this um, or specifically about this, please let us know, reach out to us, and we can help provide some information. So we ask a few other questions here. Uh, there is logic built in depending on if you choose yes or no. Some additional pop-ups may come up asking for additional information or descriptions. Um, one thing we do want to point out here, we get a lot of questions related to district formation. Um, so you do not need to have district formation completed by the time that you apply for uh, the WEAR IMG program, but we do want to see if it's applicable, we do want to see that you are moving forward in that process. So depending on the answer that you choose here, we'll ask for more information 
about the status of the district formation, and we would ask that you upload any documents that help show that status in the document section that we'll get into a few tabs in a few tabs. So next is the budget section. So this asks you to fill out information related to your construction contracts as well as the budget for the project. So um, you would enter information in here and as you enter information, it will tally up to a total project cost. And then we ask for the date that the cost estimate was developed. Please note that uh, the cost estimates cannot be more than six months old. So um, you will notice if you try to put in a date that is older than six months from um, before now, you will not be able to move forward in the application. So um, make sure that your cost estimate is no more than uh, six months old. Next, we ask questions about your plan of finance. So you would enter information here related to municipal contributions, uh, if you have non-EFC debt, if there are any non-EFC grants that you've applied for or been awarded for, um, or any other funding. And you, know, you can choose not applicable if these do not apply, but we want um, information on these uh, topics, these, these areas. Um, and uh, if you have questions about this section, please reach out to us um, and we can help guide you through that. New to the application this year is this uh, equivalent dwelling unit or EDU section. Um, so this we ask you to provide information associated with ratepayers responsible for the debt on the project. Um, this is, um, again, it's new. For those of you who, who have applied for SRF financing, um, this is, you'll notice that this is also on the SRF application, um, or if you have an existing financing with us, we've um, asked you for that information before. So this information can usually be found in the engineering report, or you know, if you have questions, your engineering consultants can help with that if you Again, have questions just about how to fill this out or any information that you might need to include here, you can reach out to EFC and, and we can help you with that. Then we have the documents section. So this is really important. Um, this is where we have all of the required documents that you need to upload. And there again, there's some logic built in depending on how you answer some of the questions in the previous tabs. This section here that says required document type, that there may be additional documents, but for the most part, if you are applying for uh, WIA and SRF, you will need to include a bond resolution. If you're just applying as grant only, we would want to see a board resolution. Uh, we can provide more information about that, and our grant summary has a detailed breakdown of what a bond resolution and a board resolution, um, what those are defined as. But um, basically, that's showing a full plan of finance. So we need to see that you can fund this project and fill the gap between the we are IMG grant and the total project costs. So please make sure that you include a full plan of finance in your resolutions that you submit. An engineering report is required. Um, the environmental review documentation or seeker and SHPO is also required. One thing we want to note, we saw this a lot in the last uh, application round, we do need to see the SHPO determination letter. So um, we had a number of municipalities who had reached out and they had submitted to SHPO and uh, were wondering if they could just include the email that they had sent to SHPO or a copy of the form that they had filled out. That is not acceptable. We do need to see that SHPO determination letter. So if you have questions about that, again, reach out and we can help. This is also where you would upload documents that just help show more information about your project. So things like grant award letters. If you have grant awards, we need to see the grant award letters so that we can confirm the amounts that you've included in your plan of finance. We wanna see things like plans and specs to show that the project is moving forward towards construction and so that you are showing readiness um, on the project. Things like letters of support, supporting documents that help us show that you have community support on the project. Those are things that you would include here as well. You can upload as many documents as you want that help support your project or show more information about your project. Um, you would select the type here and then you would enter a description. If it's a required document, these uh, notifications over here that say no right now because I have nothing uploaded will switch over to yes so you can see that you have included 
the required documents, and then you can upload any additional documents that you think are helpful for the project or that you would like us to see. Then you would move on to the acknowledgements section. So these are some acknowledgements that you will be required to acknowledge in order to submit the application. So these include uh, the MWBE, EEO, and SDVOB goals that Liz had talked about earlier, and um, some information about the federal requirements um, that are applicable if you are looking for SRF um, or bill financing. We then also included the MWBE, SDVOB, and EEO work plan as part of the application. So this is something that we would reach out to you for um, anyway as you're pursuing your project. So we included it here as a convenience for you so that you can fill this out and we won't have to come back to you for additional documentation. So this is a nice way to streamline the process and help um, have you enter information in one location. So you would fill that out. Um, and then smart growth, which is required, is also included as part of the application. So previously, for anyone who's familiar with our program, you may be familiar with our smart growth form um, that you used to have to fill out separately and include as an upload. This time, you don't have to do that. So it's built directly into the application. You would fill this out and you choose not applicable um, where that would be your answer. And um, then you can submit your application. So. Once you're done this, if you want to check and see if you've answered everything that you need to, if everything passes validation, you would choose this validate uh, button. So I'm going to click that. It's going to give me a lot of errors because I have nothing filled out. Uh, but this will give you detailed information about anything that you are missing in the application that is required. So that way you can see if you're missing anything, if you've skipped over something inadvertently, you can go to that section. Um, if you need to export this to Excel, if you're, you know, if you're working with someone else on the application, you can do that to share with them. Um, but this will let you know anything that you need to correct before you submit your application. You can also print the application. So this is a question that we see a lot, you know, as you're working on this, if you need to uh, work with a team of people, you can uh, print out the application, download it um, by clicking on this arrow right here. Uh, one thing we do want to know as of right now, uh, you cannot share the application through the portal. So anyone who starts the application, that is the person that will need to continue filling it out um, and submitting it. Uh, so just keep that in mind. We are working on trying to figure out a way to allow that sharing, but as of right now, we don't have that ability. So if you did need to work with others as you're filling this out, you can download this and share a PDF of the application. You can also save a copy once you filled everything out. Um, you can save this and um, share it or store it in your files if you needed to. And your application will continue to exist in this portal. Uh, so if you ever needed to go back to it, it'll be in the portal. But in case you want to save your own file, you can do that as well. And so something else that um, we wanted to know as you're working on the application, if you are having some struggles with it or you need to, um, you know, ask for help, you can choose this help button right here. Um, and we'll have our contact information on uh, future slides that are coming up. So if you need that information as well, um, reach out to us anytime. We're happy to help answer your questions, walk you through the application. If you have any trouble with the portal, please let us know. Um, uh, we can we can help with with all of those items. Um, so I'm going to stop sharing my screen and go back to our slides. And so I'm going to turn it over to Liz, who's going to do a review of the program, and then we'll have some time to answer some questions. All right. Thanks. Um, so this slide is really just rolling up a lot of the. Um, details that we went over today. I know we have a lot of questions in the chat, so we're going to try to jump over to that here in a second. But um, hopefully this is a good resource for you to keep track of um, whether your project that you're, you're seeking is eligible with some of our criteria and trying to walk through the required documents or programmatic requirements um, for whether you're seeking SRF financing or just going for, um, for a grant. 
All right. So here we have our contact information. So if you have questions after this webinar, anytime uh, throughout the application period, you can reach out to nyswatergrants at efc.my.gov. That's a shared mailbox that we have. Um, EFC staff are on it. Myself and Liz are on it. Our colleagues at DOH are also on it. So we can help answer any questions that you have. Uh, we also have a link to our website here. So if you want more information about our other programs or just want to access the application, you can do that through our website. Again, really important date, June 14th by 5 p.m. is when applications are due. So make sure you start your application as early as possible. Um, if you can submit them earlier that, you know, it's not guaranteed, but it does allow us time to look at the applications. And if we notice that, you know, any of the required documents are missing or that there's an issue, we can help you with that. If you wait until closer to the deadline, then there's less of a chance that we'll be able to um, assist you with that just because of the number of applications that we receive. Um, so start early. If you have questions, please reach out to us. We are here to help and we want everyone to be as successful as they possibly can be with this program. So we will jump into some questions. Some set aside. Oh, so sure. I'm gonna prompt you. Okay. Um, before going back to some of the earlier questions, because since you just went over the application, I wanna leave with these. We got a couple of questions about who is authorized to submit the application. For example, if the consultant starts and completes the application, can they do it on behalf of the client? And also asking for whether signatures are required and whether that person needs to go to the court of themselves. So if you can cover that, that would be great. Sure, first. absolutely. So I'll actually pull the um, application back up. So just to answer your question quickly, the there is a signature form that is required. Um, it needs to be signed by the highest elected official or an authorized representative. So when you complete your application, it won't let me show you it right now because this isn't a complete app, but um, I can show you the signature page. Um, when you click to submit the application, you'll get a pop up that will ask you to upload the signature page. So this is uh, available here. I'll, uh, I'll pull it up. It will let me. So this can be electronically signed by the highest elected official or authorized representative. Um, you would then upload this to the application for submission. So the reason we do it this way is so that um, if there's someone else who is not the highest elected official or authorized rep filling out the application, they can, you can still submit it on behalf of the municipality. The signature page tells us that you've gone through the application with the highest elected official or authorized rep. They have approved the submission of the application on behalf of the municipality. So say you're a consulting engineer or um, a grant writing consultant, you can fill out the application and submit it on behalf of the municipality. We just need that signature page to be included. So that pop-up will come up when you click submit You'll need to upload that and then um, you can submit the application. If you don't have that, you're unable to submit. So that's something that you will be required to have before you move forward. Thanks. Um, so we got a couple questions just to clarify the grant percentages um, between the program. So I just wanted to walk through those one more time. On the clean water side for wastewater infrastructure, the um, traditional route is 25% grant of net eligible project costs up to a maximum of $25 million. And net eligible costs means we back out, before we calculate your award, we back out non-EFC funding. So if you um, were awarded a clean water state revolving fund grant, a bill grant or a GIGP grant, we do not back those out of your total project cost before calculating 25%. If you're eligible for enhanced WIA, so that's for um, small, rural, and disadvantaged communities that meet the criteria, you could be eligible for 50% grant up to $25 million. Um, and again, we don't back out EFC grants. On the drinking water side, it is traditionally 60% grant up to a $5 million max and we do back out or offset um, your total project cost by any uh, drinking water grant funds, whether that's DWSRF grant or bill. Um, and then you could be eligible for 75% grant up to no cap um, if your project meets the, oh, sorry, 70% grant 
um, with no cap uh, for emerging contaminant projects uh, that are above the statewide uh, MCL level. All right, so ma'am, this one is for you. Uh, there are a bunch of questions about uh, if a community was awarded in a previous round of WIA and want to take advantage of the additional grant funds, the 50% grant for WIA for the enhanced, uh, whether they could apply for these funds or not. Sure, so if you were a 2023 um, awardee, you would have already received communication from EFC about this, but if you are a previous awardee, so 2022 and back, um, if you did want to compete for the enhanced WIA, you would need to rescind or decline your current uh, WIA grant and reapply. That is something that I, I urge you to reach out to me about um, through the water grants mailbox. Um, you know, that's something that we would want to discuss with you in detail so that you um, so that you just know, you know, the the risk with doing that and, and kind of how that can impact your project. We would want to make sure that we know um, that we know what's going on with the project and that we are helping you consider all of the options. Um, so if, if you are considering that, if you're a 2022 awardee or back, uh, please reach out to us uh, so that we can discuss that in more detail. All right, and this is also another application question. Someone had asked if they have an existing SRF project number and maybe they've already submitted an SRF application in the past. Uh, they were asking whether or not that they would need to apply for SRF financing again along with the WIA application. Yep, if you are applying, uh, if you're an existing SRF project and you're applying for WIA, we would want you to fill out the SRF application in the portal. So um, part of the application process, you won't be able to submit your WIA application without that SRF application. Um, also, you know, it just allows if there's information that you need to update uh, from a previous application, just provides that newer application for us. So you will need to fill out the SRF application. It will prompt you to do that, uh, but you can copy a lot of your answers over, so you won't have to fill out a ton of information. Um, it'll copy a lot of what you enter in your WIA application, or if you previously submitted an SRF application through the portal, you can copy over those answers as well. So um, you will need to do that. Make sure you include your project number in your application so that we can help uh, link the two after submission. Okay, there was a question about what the definition was of EDU. Um, that's equivalent dwelling unit. Um, you know, we recognize that maybe not all municipalities use that um, that term for uh, determining their user rate. So, essentially, we're just looking for the community to um, identify the number of users or connections or or EDUs, if you do use that term, um, to come up with uh, a metric for determining. Uh, how the project costs will be split between those users. Um, feel free to uh, reach out for project specific questions or community specific questions. If you're having trouble filling out this section, uh, we can definitely help guide you to complete it in time for June. Uh, we got a question about does applying for SRF in addition to WIA result in a smaller grant since the municipality is indicating a willingness to fund with loans? Um, whether or not you use SRF financial assistance or go a WIA grant only, it does not adjust your, your grant amount that you're eligible for. The only thing that would adjust your grant award would be if you had ineligible project costs. Uh, for example, for wastewater projects, if you had a stormwater component that's not related to your uh, sewer flows, we would back that out before calculating your grant award. Um, similarly, we would back out your non EFC grants on the clean water side, for example, oh, or both actually both programs, excuse me. Um, but, it, it, you know, whether or not you use our funding or not does not impact how much grant you get. And we've had several questions about district formation. So I do want to be clear that we're not asking district formation documents to be submitted at the time of application. But, um, you know, if you are seeking SRF uh, financial assistance and you need to submit a bond resolution, you need to be far enough along in that process that you can submit your bond resolution. But your district formation documents, um, they can be used uh, to provide us information about how where you are with the process and we'll need those documents eventually to close your financing or grant agreement. 
um, but we're not requiring them to be submitted up front with the application. So if you have specific questions on this, again, related to your projects, I would just recommend that you reach out to the Water Grants email address and we can help better guide you with that. Um, but just wanted to clarify that there. Um, there was a question about whether the engineer's sub contract needed to have EFC terms and conditions or just the primary engineer with the municipality. For funding, we do uh, have to review all engineering agreements and we confirm that the terms and conditions are included. Um, technically, the EFC terms and conditions trickle down to your subcontracts, whether that's on your engineering contracts or your construction contracts. So, you should encourage your subcontractor, well, you should be providing the terms and conditions in your subcontract, but um, those may not be necessarily submitted to EFC for review, but just note that they will be subject to the same requirements as your primary contract. Um, it looks like we have a few clarifying questions about the application. So a, a consultant or a grant writer can submit the application on behalf of a municipality under your profile or the consultant or grant writer's profile, uh, as long as that signature page is there. So that is required. You're not gonna be able to submit it uh, without the signature page. Um, the highest elected official or the authorized rep, whomever signs it, it will need to match the highest elected official or the authorized rep that you entered in the application. So we do review that. Um, so make sure that those two items match, but as long as you have that signature page signed by the highest elected official or an authorized representative, you can, if you are a consultant or a grant writer, submit the application on behalf of the municipality. Um, there's also a question about if there's a character limit for the open-ended responses. There is, I can't recall that off the top of my head, um, but you'll, as you're entering the information, you will get um, a pop-up that lets you know if, if you're over that and if you need to, to trim it down. Um, but it is, uh, there, are, there are character limits there. Um, we did have a question that was uh, specific to the IMG program and the lead applicant. Um, the question was, our village would like to build and connect a new sewer system to a neighboring village. Would we be the lead since we would be financing the project? Uh, would we need to have a combined sewer district? Uh, we definitely have had projects that have been awarded IMG in this situation. Um, I would say whatever municipality is taking the lead uh, in general for the project, which it sounds like um, you would be already planning to do the financing of the project. I would say that makes sense that you would apply on behalf of both communities. You don't necessarily need to have a combined sewer district. I think that gets worked out with, um, you know, how the IMA is written and how you plan to structure the sewer district. We do have legal staff that are assigned to all projects. I would probably recommend that we could talk more specifically about that project and how we um, set set up the project for closing a grant agreement or um, financing agreement. But I think in, in terms of applying for the WIA grant, you really just need to show the uh, submit the IMA to EFC that explains how you plan to do the project jointly. Uh, you know, how um, how that will be structured on your end. And then usually the EFC team assigned to the project would kind of go through some of that minutia to make sure it's all set by the time we get ready to close um, on either a grant agreement or financing agreement. I think that's all the time we have for questions. So I see that there are a number of questions that are coming in. We will make sure that we respond to you directly. Um, you can also send your questions to our email address here, New York State Water Grants at efc.ny.gov. Before we close, uh, we do want to emphasize again, June 14th by 5 p.m. is when applications are due. Start them early and reach out to us at any time if you have questions. Um, I also want to mention that we will have a um, an in-depth video about the application, the portal um, that will be on our website by the end of the month. So you can use that to reference as you're working through the application. It will go in depth into each question, you know, things that you need to keep in mind. Um, so that'll help you as you fill out the application and provide additional guidance. 
There's also in the portal, as you work on your application, there are there's an instruction guide in there as well. So you can use that um, as you start navigating through. But we just wanted to highlight that there will be a more extensive video about the application specifically in the portal um, that will be on our website in a few months. Again, this has been recorded, so we will post this to the website so that you can go back to it and reference it. Um, and again, thank you all for being here today. We look forward to working with you all on your WIA or IMG applications. Have a great day, everyone.